Why are Beyonce and Lenny Kravitz two perfect examples as to how black talent and blackness presented to the world? It's still not enough. Fendi like the bag. <laughs> This is the I Refuse Podcast. This is Mr. Fox, the I Refuse Podcast. Almost made it to the weekend. Almost. Ugh, I was this close. This close. Minding my African American business. Out here trying to make a little bit of coin while the sun and the earth are on their way to colliding. And here we go. Here we go. Y'all just cannot get together. So there I was earlier this week when something came across my timeline down at the Bird app. Y'all have accused Beyonce of bleaching her skin. So if you have been under a rock the past couple of weeks, you know that Beyonce on December the 1st released the Renaissance film worldwide, which is basically a movie about the tour, behind the scenes, preparation, family moments, uh, a lot of fantastic stuff. Of course, there'll be parts of the concert in the movie. So maybe like, Days before that, she had a Renaissance movie premiere event in L.A. There was, you know, silver carpet, silver backdrop, a lot of cameras and everything. All five members of Destiny's Child, not fair, the intern, were there. All of them looked amazing. Beyonce shows up. A uh, platinum blonde wig, silver outfit, looking noticeably lighter. You ragamuffins out here decide from a fan page, several, claiming that this girl wants to be white so bad, look at Beyonce Kardashian, all kinds of chaotic, ignorant, uh, anti-black statements. Here's the thing. At some point, you guys got so annoying that Miss Tina Knowles, the woman that birthed, carried the whole shebang and bang, brought Beyonce into this world, had to respond. Now, you know at this point that Beyonce doesn't really respond to anything, but she's definitely paying attention. And not only that, so is her mother and so is some of her, the adults in her family. Miss Tina had to come down to the IG about two or three days ago said, came across this today, meaning a montage of video clips from various stages of Beyonce's career. We're talking almost 30 years. With the different looks, um, with the words going across the entire montage, I'm a black woman, she's a black woman, blah, 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 blah. And in the caption, Miss Tina says, came across this today and decided to post it after seeing all of the stupid, ignorant, self-hating racist statements about her, lightening her skin, wearing platinum hair, wanting to be white. She does a film called The Renaissance where the whole theme is silver with silver hair, a silver carpet, and suggested silver attire, and you bozos decided that she's trying to be a white woman and is bleaching her skin. How sad is it that some of her own people continue the stupid narrative with hate and jealousy? Duh, she wore silver hair to match her silver dress as a fashion statement clown. Alien superstar, duh. What's really sad 
is that a white woman had the audacity to reach out to Neo, Beyonce's hairstylist. She was from TMZ to say that the fans are saying that she wants to be white and she wanted to get a statement about it from Neil. Well, that made my blood boil. That this white woman felt so entitled to discuss her blackness. What's really most disappointing is that the same black people, yes, you bozos, that's on social media, lying and faking and acting like you're so ignorant that you don't understand that black women have worn platinum hair since the Adam James days. I just went and looked at all the beautiful, talented black celebrities who have worn platinum hair, and it has been just about every one of them. At one time or another, are they all trying to be white? I am sick and tired of people attacking her. Every time she does something that she works her ass off for, and is a statement of her work ethic, talent, and resilience. Here you sad little haters coming out the woodwork, jealousy and racism, sexism, double standards, you perpetrate those things. Instead of celebrating a sister or just ignoring if you don't like her, I'm sick of you losers. I know that she is going to be pissed at me for doing this, but I'm fed up. This girl minds her own business. This girl minds her own business. She helps people whenever she can. She lifts up and promotes black women and underdogs at all times. It got to a point down the bird at to where, again, user 25786543 or whatever threw themselves on the sword of shitty hot takes, claiming that Beyonce's never never goes up for black women, where is she when black women need her and all this other stuff. Meanwhile, we have photographic evidence all the time. And she has said so many things through her music. We're talking about a woman that has given you Black Parade, Lion King of the Gift, Homecoming, uh, what else? She also gave you... What, Black Parade, Lion King, Lion King of the Gift, Formation, Lemonade, which was all about celebrating and valuing black women and black relationships. She's married to a black man. She has black, like, th there's that. And then there's this other thing called context that you guys seem to ignore. That for those of us that have been outside, have always known Beyonce to be naturally light-skinned. Her grandmother is of Creole descent, and it's not a biracial tone. It's Louisiana, old-school Creole descent, lineage, all that kind of stuff. And for those of us that have been outside since day one, a lot of us are aware that Beyonce has said pretty early on in her career at some point that she had been tanning those early those early days and at some point she stopped tanning but even before that when you're talking about Destiny's Child's second album first and second album when you see old photos of them Destiny's Child receiving their platinum album um, plaques and all that other stuff the girl is light-skinned. Then on top of that, those of us that are aware of makeup, like you can easily, same people that can easily get up and conceal blemishes, can play around with colors on the face and everything, you can brighten your tone by a couple of pets with the makeup. And all that lighting on the re on the carpet of the premiere, given you know with the hair and everything, she's gonna it's gonna show up like that. Like, but that's not even the point. 
y'all are just still picking at this girl and are not happy. Even after she has given you an album that not only celebrates Black Pride, but also Gay Pride, Vogue culture, ballroom culture, she uses her platform as leverage to put on a higher platform a culture, a corner of society that for the longest time was overshadowed by the AIDS epidemic and the AIDS crisis. This is before social media. It got to a point to where political officials thought we were just a monolith of carrying stuff and giving it to people and we were savage savages and unrefined and animals and less than even after the biggest superstar of our generation living male female gives you yet another black ass album you, Raggedy Heifers, decide to get on your low-quality internet connection and accuse this girl of bleaching. When all this girl did was show up to the premiere of her tour movie, donning similar attire that you guys wore to all of her shows. Make it make sense. You know, y'all are the selfie generation and looking for the best angle and put all this money into creating looks and everything. You know, the generation that's so, so you know, self-conscious and, and so obsessed with image and everything and that pursuit to have the perfect picture. Like, you didn't pick up on how backgrounds and hair and certain kind of makeup tends to show up differently in a picture, sometimes drastically. That girl's not bleaching her skin. Not like y'all were accusing Dr. Wendy's mom on Housewives of Potomac. Now that, like, that's like Sammy Sosa level. Beyonce isn't doing what Sammy Sosa did. Beyonce is not a self-hating black person. And I don't understand how after 10 or 15 years of celebrating us and celebrating what it means to be black in a culture and a time that aims to keep us in the ground. We just all, all of a sudden decide, you know what? At my, at my premiere of my movie covering my tour, that all of y'all showed up in similar silver attire I'm going to decide, you know, I'm going to go out Sammy Sosa style. Allegedly Sammy Sosa style. I don't want, I don't want Frank and Barry to come over here and shut my shit down. But here we are again. It's like when I think of this whole, con this whole controversy, I think back of when... Y'all have always hated on Beyonce for some reason. Like, it's funny how in one breath we've always wanted more reflections and representation of black excellence, of powerful black examples for the kids, um, uh, something that when... 15, 20, 30 years from now, people can look back and study that, oh, that's us that did that. Yet in the next breath, 
you pick, you try to pick apart that example. Even at her level. This is why Beyonce doesn't come outside. This is why Beyonce makes U-turns when the bloggers show up to the rock brunch. This is why Beyonce walks out the back of the building directly into an SUV with tinted windows and goes home. This is why she limits her social media presence to happy birthday, so-and-so. This is why Beyonce doesn't talk to us. But best believe, the hateration that you guys are spewing on your grandmother's internet, the dial-up that still makes the faxing noises, that they're using the hateration as inspiration to do better. Blue Ivy, has had the best summer and the best 2024, 2023, my bad, 2023, only raised the bar. And all it took was you same haters spreading your hateration in this dancery, talking about how, you know, stiff she was on the tour and all this other stuff. But baby, by the middle of the tour to the conclusion of the tour. She was giving you Boom Boom Cat. She was giving you, I study at the school of Lorianne Gibson. We call that growth. The connection that Beyonce and Lenny Kravitz share, who I'm going to talk to about in a minute, is that even when they continue to exemplify through their talent and through their spirit what black greatness is, it's still not enough for folks. And with that, I'm going to talk about Lenny Kravitz. Mr. Fox, the I Refuse podcast here. Music fan first, music lover always. Y'all have really um, woke Lenny Kravitz up to, to speak about how he has never felt accepted by the black masses, black media, so on and so forth. Never been invited to the BET Awards, Never been invited to the NAACP Image Awards. Never been invited to the Source Awards, Soul Train Awards, all of that. So, Lenny Kravitz, the black rock god himself. I know your mammies and your aunties and your grandmas have been fawning all over this man for the past 30 years. The man can't help it. But in the winter 2023 cover story of Esquire, he shares his frustration. The rock star, who is 59, wow, spoke candidly about his life since breaking out into the 90s. He feels as though his music and success is not celebrated by the folks who run black publications and organizations. He feels like outlets that could have recognized him in his work over the years have not. In addition, he mentions that Vibe didn't put him on their cover until nearly a decade into his career. He offered several other examples. He says that to this day, he has not been invited to a BET thing or a Source Awards thing. It's like, here's a black artist who has reintroduced many black art forms who has broken down barriers just like those that came before me broke it down. That is positive. And they don't have anything to say about it? 
he says, I've been that dream an example of what a black artist can do. There was this one article that at that time said if Lenny Kravitz were white, he would be the next savior of rock and roll. I got a lot of negativity thrown at me by all these older white men who weren't going to let me have that position. So, here's the thing. When we think of black rock superstars, right? There are two names that come to everybody's, the forefront of everybody's mind. That's Tina Turner and that's Prince. And the thing about it is Tina Turner, I mean, knee deep in rock and roll in his formative years. Like post James Brown, post uh, Little Richard and everything. But the thing about Tina Turner is that she was able to permeate in a white male dominated, still highly racially sensitive time. And sure, you know, she, op she opened a lot of doors and was able to play in a lot of spaces internationally. <laughs> But I don't think she got the the pushback or the um, the ignorance, like especially when what's love got to do with it came out, and she kind of dabbled in like some R and B for a little bit. Um, you know, by that time, black people started to come around a little bit more. Thankfully, or for better or worse, due to the movie, and people were like. Okay, I can get with that. But I think our downfall is that we tend to bond the best over trauma. Like, everybody saw that movie and was like, oh, damn. She was getting her ass whooped. And we instantly started to get really protective and really respect her a lot more as a, as a survivor. And not so much as a rock and roll musician saw her more as like a soulful vocalist but never really was there for like the pre what Slav got to do with it album and even some of her later stuff not until she got to her uh wildest dream album and oprah had it on the show like maybe once or twice but we never went hard for tina turner the entire time but she was international she was everywhere, embraced more so with the white audiences than she was by us in totality. But when it came to like Prince, you couldn't define him, couldn't categorize him. He had the gospel, the rock, the pop, the funk, the um, electronic stuff, um, the ballads, all kinds of stuff. But again, out of all of Prince's material, and I'm saying this from the black perspective, people really, when they think of Prince, they instantly think of Purple Rain. And probably only Purple Rain. Maybe the Diamonds and Pearls album. Um, maybe his 3121 and musicology and stuff like that. But if it, for the most part, if it's not R&B, it's not for us. But those of us that were aware of his pre-Purple Rain stuff, 1999, Controversy, Dirty Mind, I Feel For You, um, Soft and Wet, we're like, okay, Controversy is probably one of my favorite Prince albums. Then you get to the later stuff, post-Purple Rain. Side of the times, things like like that. But the thing about Prince is that they white people couldn't help but deny Prince. They couldn't help but, I mean, not deny him. They, he was undeniable. Um, and I'm sure in Tina Turner and Prince's case, they too face some form of racism or, you know, some form of, there was either some kind of restriction or 
some kind of surprise like, oh, look at him. He's really giving like Tom Petty and Jeff Beck and all those guys a run for their money while they do their guitar solos at the Grammys. Those of us that know, know. But the thing about it is, it wasn't until later that we really started to revere Tina Turner and Prince. Like, Prince never stopped working. Prince has roughly 30 or so albums, when you think about it, and a lot of unreleased stuff. But when you ask black people what their favorite Prince album is, it's either Diamonds and Pearls or more on a, you know, or Purple Rain. People still go in droves to go see Purple Rain when it's in the theater. I only saw it like once all the way through in my entire life. Keep moving, but it's literally like no plot. But they really tried to make him into something like an actor after that. And I was just like, it's just not, it's not connected. But when it comes to Lenny Kravitz, right? It blows my mind because here you have Lenny Kravitz who, whose mom was on one of the blackest shows, the Jeffersons. And it could be this thing that most black people can't get with. This idea that this person is selling out by being with a white person or playing to white audience, playing up to white audiences, uh, seeing it as a form of assimilation. Yet and still though, like I said earlier, in the one breath, we want our kids to have examples of black power representation and, you know, this is a success story. This man or this woman, this artist did it really big. But in the next breath, we chastise them for making it as big as they did. Case in point, Whitney Houston, when she got booed at the awards back in the late 80s. Like, it's just, what what more do you want? You know, Lenny Kravitz has been doing this for about 30 some odd years. Is, is or was he a, a Nepo baby? Probably. But... It was definitely a different time in the 70s and the 80s when it came to using your your privilege. Um, you know, the Jeffersons had long been gone by the mid 80s. Um, Roxy Roker, who is, I think, the second or third cousin of Al Roker from The Morning Show. Like, they're not... You're not thinking about, you know, when you think of his mom and his dad, you're not thinking about, of like, oh, you know, he came from Rockefeller money. Or he came from Hilton money, you know what I mean? Like, so it wasn't to that level as far as the nepotism. But it's not like the brother isn't talented. And Mama said, the blackest album and it's and it's like for a lot of us that claim to be into music and claim to be well rounded and all this other stuff, probably couldn't even name a Lenny Kravitz album. Mama said is my favorite Lenny Kravitz album, followed by five. Um, and it's crazy because. Lenny Kravitz is one of those artists who probably benefited the most in the 90s from the time when MTV and VH1 was still playing music videos. Like, he's never had a dud single or, like, any kind of dud deep cut that was just like, I don't know about this. And... 
for him to be like his first run was on Virgin Records. The same record company that had Jenna Jackson. So I don't know if it's a case of because Lenny Kravitz was not a Jackson that he didn't get the same love that Janet got. But if I was to say that, people would be pushing back and be like, well, Janet didn't get as far as she did because of her last name. But I'd be lying if I didn't say she benefited from that to some degree. Like, let's call a thing a thing. She definitely but worked her ass off, but it's not about Janet. This is about Lenny. Lenny has never, I've never seen Lenny in the audience at any of these award shows the last 15, 20 years. He has never, I don't think, been nominated. And he's been in some black ass shit. Albeit briefly, he, he was in Precious. Looking so fine. He was in Precious. Let's see. Um, he continued to release albums well into 20, 25 years. And he's out there. Like, he, he's out there. But y'all have been talking more about his looks than his music. And I'm telling you, if you put on his debut album and then go up until his greatest hits, you will probably have your mind blown. You'll probably be like, damn, that was him that time? Wow. Oh, shit. That was him? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lenny Kravitz has been banging out hits and been, has been giving y'all some great quality rock music. Now, there are some white people that are like, oh, my God, he's such a hack, which I think is coded in racism. That's neither here nor there. What I'm telling y'all is that even when you're at the height, as long as Lenny Kravitz has, even when you're at the height that Beyonce has, it's just not enough for folks. And I beg the question, what more do you want? What more do you want? Everybody's on mute. Interesting. So, I will be going to see the Renaissance film in theaters on the 8th. Next Friday, actually. <coughs> and yes, I will be returning with a review. And I will be honest. I'm very excited. I was not able to catch her on tour. She was asking for a lot of money and Ticketmaster was being a mess. And I think Live Nation was okay. But, like, I was having myself prepped to go see Madonna. Because, listen. I've been black all my life. But Madonna, baby... You want to talk about a catalog. So, here's the thing. If you've learned nothing else today from this video, let it be known that moments like these just reiterate how hypocritical and uh, how much of a lie we can be when... We really just contradict ourselves out here as to, oh, there's not enough black representation and yada, 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 yada. But yet y'all go up for the most mid stuff and then chastise 
the the most high quality blackest shit on such a huge level. And y'all still complain. So many different black artists in various genres. Yet y'all still go for like little little hot pants this and ASAP ASAP dirty braids that you know just can y'all can y'all please have a little bit more range? You know, we're about almost a fourth of the way through the twenty first century and y'all have not only allowed and enabled but put on pedestals all of these mid people and you know there are some that are learning as they go on and we're seeing that we're paying attention to that but y'all would rather give all the love and support and excitement to people from TikTok so much so that they're in a recording studio making a song about popcorn. They're literally turning TikTok phrases into songs. But when a bitch gives you yet again another one of the blackest albums that they've ever made. Y'all wait until the premiere and think this girl is bleaching. There's a difference between makeup changes and wearing platinum hair from actual bleaching to where the pigmentation on your entire body has drastically and dramatically changed from one season of a reality show to the next. It's not subtle, it's drastic and obvious. And this, and you are indoors, it's daylight, and it's regular lighting. Like every week in this damn universe, on this damn planet, we here at the I Refuse Podcast are constantly educating y'all, trying to save y'all from jumping off the cliff because y'all can't tell the difference between two things. And two things that are in your face all the time. The difference between wearing lighter makeup, having a platinum blonde wig, and the science behind what different material and clothes, especially clothes that glitter, and the backdrop that glitters, and what kind of lighting does to your face as it shows up in film, versus people actually bleaching their skin. The difference between a criminal suit and a civil suit. And the goals that the person filing the suit has. We're about three weeks in of doing that. Aren't y'all tired? Like, how is it that the generation that grew up on reading Rainbow and never leave a child behind can't tell the difference between a criminal suit and a civil suit. One is strictly about money, and one is to make sure the other person serves jail time. How is it that y'all can spend so much money at Alta Beauty, a place that has different shades of makeup to create different looks, but can't tell the difference between, oh, 
She has different color makeup on and she is in fact not bleaching. How? Like, please go outside and touch the blade of grass. What is happening right now? This is the kind of shit is why Jesus does not return voicemails. Why the aliens lock their doors, keep their windows closed on their spaceship and drive right the fuck past Earth. This is Mr. Foxy yeah, Fuse Podcast. Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you're you're gonna go into the weekend educated, informed, and um minding your motherfucking business. And we will catch you guys later. I refuse podcasts available everywhere, wherever you get your streaming and your podcasts. I refuse, I refuse podcasts after dark, the usual suspects. Of course, this YouTube channel, the Twitter at I refuse podcast, all one word, follow, subscribe, wherever you see us. And we will keep the bullshit coming. Peace. Fendi, like the bag. <laughs> This is the I Refuse Podcast.